All right, so I've been trying to record this video for the past hour or so, but there's construction going on outside my apartment. So if you hear any banging in the background, that's what that noise is. So the fact that there was noise outside my apartment right now is very apt because I wanted to make a video about worrying less, how to reduce your worry in life. And one of my worries was whether you would hear that sound in the background. So I did something that I'm gonna talk about later in the video, which is to confront the worry directly. Now this video was actually suggested by one of our Discord members who asked me to specifically address the topic of worry. So thank you so much for doing that and I'm happy to do that in future videos too if you have a topic that you would like us to cover. In this video today, I wanna to talk about four steps that will help you to reduce the amount of worry in your life. Now I don't wanna say stop worrying or to completely eradicate worry from your life because that isn't possible. We are always going to worry in some small way in our lives, it's a natural part part of our mental ability. It's something that we use to fend off danger in some ways. So being a little bit worried or being at least aware and hyper cautious is something that's built into us at a very base level. We can't actually stop it completely, but we can reduce it dramatically with the right mental tools. Now, as a kid, I used to be a terrible worrier. I would worry about what people thought of me. I'd worry about my school results. I'd worry about whether the world was gonna end. Everything in my life was a worry. And it took me a long time, probably into my mid twenties, even early thirties, to reduce the habit of worrying down to a point where I feel like I have control of it. Today, I actually worry very little in my life at all. If I have a situation or a problem that I can't deal with directly, I have the mental tools available to me to actually reduce the worry and to move on with my life anyway. And that's what I wanna share with you today, the four different ideas that I have used in my life that have helped me to reduce worry and to feel better in the day to day as I'm living my life. So let's start off with a discussion of what worry is. If you look in the dictionary, the definition is to give way to anxiety or unease allow one's mind to dwell on difficulty or troubles. So we all know what worry is. It's when you feel stress or anxiety about a situation or even a hypothetical situation that might happen in your life and you kind of dwell on it. You can't seem to move past it and it sometimes freezes you in place. The best definition of worry that I've ever heard is making mental pictures of what you don't want. Now, I can't remember who actually said that to me or if I read it somewhere, but I've always remembered that, making mental pictures of what you don't want. When you imagine a situation happening a certain way that is negatively affecting you, that's when worry will take over your life. Now, just because you understand what worry is, it doesn't mean that it's gonna necessarily stop in your life. The tendency to worry becomes a habit. And I wanna explain a little bit about what I've learned about how we tend to worry so that maybe you can help to unravel it for yourself. It comes down to two different things that we do, forecasting and fixating. Now, let me explain. Forecasting is when you look out into your future and you think about things in a negative way. You anticipate things going badly for you. You're making a mental picture of what you don't want to happen. You're forecasting that things won't go the way you want them to go. Fixating is when you tend to dwell on that situation. You think about what will happen as a result of that. You worry about what will happen down the road. That is when you fixate and you keep obsessing about the situation, even though there's probably nothing you can do directly in the moment. Most of us have the tendency of forecasting and fixating, especially when it comes to situations in our lives we can't control. The fact that you do this shows that whatever you are worrying about is important to you, and that's a crucial point to remember. Whatever it is you're worrying about, there's something important in your life that is being affected, otherwise you wouldn't be concerned at all. But just remember those two terms, forecasting and fixating. Whenever you notice yourself getting into a worry cycle, it's probably because you're doing one of those two things. And you can easily catch yourself in the act, and eventually you can start to stop it and even reverse it. So with those things in mind, let's talk about the four different ideas to help you to reduce worry in your life. The first one is to figure out the benefit of worrying. Now this might sound weird, but when you think about it, there is actually a payoff to you worrying in your life. Maybe it's that you get to avoid taking action. Maybe it's that you get attention because you talk to people about what you worry. Maybe you like the drama or the entertainment of the worry. Maybe it's just a habit in your life that you've developed over many years of trying to protect yourself. There's actually a benefit and a payoff to you worrying about the situation. Like I said earlier, usually you worry about things in your life that you value, that are important to you, that have some important consequence. So figure out what the benefit is to you of being a worrier, being someone who makes these negative mental pictures and see if you can start to catch yourself in the act. Realize that you're actually doing it because you're getting a secondary payoff. Very often this is the case for a lot of our behavior, even though we don't realize it in the moment. We feel like we're doing something that's negative negatively affecting us, but at the same time, it's rewarding us at a subconscious or a deeper level. So the more you realize this, the easier it is again to unravel the worry habit and to start to move past it. 
The second idea that I've learned to reduce worry is to figure out the worst case scenario. Now, if you think about the situation that you're worrying about right now, there is a worst case scenario. There is something that can go horribly wrong in the situation, the worst fear that you have that could come true. Figure out exactly what that is and get very clear on it. This is a great technique that a lot of psychologists and therapists use when people tend to get anxiety and worry, because if you can focus and you can figure out what is the very worst case scenario, then you're in a position to actually confront it and deal with it. Same as I did at the start of this video, I was worried that everyone would be able to hear the construction noise in the back. I confronted it directly because that's the worst case scenario. Sounds ridiculous from your perspective, but for me, I was worried about the quality of my video. Now I know life worries are usually a lot bigger than that, but that's an example of something where you figure out the worst case scenario, whatever it is, and you realize that, okay, now maybe I can start to confront it. The third step, once you've figured out the worst case scenario, is to accept that it might come true. I'm not trying to be negative here by saying this, but sometimes in your life, the things you worry about will come to pass. You probably notice that. You anticipate something negative happening and it does happen. But guess what? You survive anyway. And that's the case with every single worry in your life. Whatever it is that you're dealing with right now, figure out the worst case scenario that can happen and accept that it might come to pass. Accept that it could become a reality and know that you will be okay anyway. The more I've started to realize that in my life, the more it's helped me dramatically in business, Business, in professional speaking, in relationships, in travel, in a lot of areas of my life, I've figured out the worst case scenario and then I've decided, okay, I can deal with it if it comes to pass. I accept the reality that it could happen and I move on despite the worry. And the fourth tip to reduce worry is to stay present and to stay neutral. This does take a little bit of practice, but it's a great technique in a lot of areas of your life, particularly when dealing with other people or situations where you feel uncomfortable. The more present you are in the moment, the more you stay in the room and outside of your head, the better you'll be able to deal with the situation. At the same time, having a neutral agenda or a neutral mindset, not thinking positively or negatively, it gives you more balance and control. I have learned in my life, especially when I'm dealing with difficult or negative situations, rather than try to force myself back to the positive, I stay in the neutral zone. I don't think about things one way or the other. I just stay neutral. When you're worrying about something in your life, this is a great technique because if you pull yourself out of the negative and you just go back to neutral and you say, this is what I'm thinking about this situation. It's neither good or bad, it's just what I'm thinking. You'll find that it gives you a lot more control and a lot more power. When you stay present and you stay neutral, it resets your brain and your emotions and it gives you back control in the situation, which is what the worry is actually taking away. So as I said at the start of this video, you can never stop worrying completely. It is a natural part of our lives and it's something that you must accept will come up from time to time. But the more you practice these mental tools and you use them to your advantage, the less you will find worry inhibiting your life and making you feel like you can't move forward. So I would suggest to you, as much as you can, practice these things in the moment and over time, and you'll find that the worry habit will start to reduce and you'll feel more empowered and you'll be able to become the person you wanna be. I hope these ideas have been insightful for you and I encourage you to keep challenging and growing yourself despite your worries. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment below sharing how you've overcome worries in your life and what you've learned as a result. And if you like what we're doing on this channel, please consider subscribing and becoming a part of our Discord. We'd love to have you as part of our community. My name is Daniel Minson Short. Thank you for watching. And as always, thank you for improving yourself.